minute I stood on the runway, I feel like I became a woman. Little girls are going to be looking at us going, oh, one day I hope I'm an angel. And they will be. Someone that's watching this will be an angel. It's something that will stick with you forever. What comes to mind when you think of Victoria's Secret? I see pinks and reds, glitter and glamour, femininity and passion. As someone who was a regular consumer of theirs back in the day, I have a lot of thoughts on this brand. If you haven't seen the recent Hulu documentary, Angels and Demons, go check it out. There was some sketchy shit going on when it came to the underbelly of Victoria's Secret, but from a consumer perspective, I don't think VS was that bad of a brand. It's no secret that this brand has been under some heat for many years now. People have claimed they are discriminatory due to their lack of body diversity. They have been accused of cultural appropriation by representing a variety of cultures in their shows. There also has been sexual assault allegations and talk of misogyny within the company. I'm going to speak from my own personal experience with the brand as a previous consumer. I'm 23 years old now, and I have experienced Victoria's Secret when they were at the height of their popularity. Candace Wanapol was the it girl. First model Candace. VS Swim was in full swing. And every music artist was clambering for a spot to perform for their fashion show. Still to this day, I have never experienced a brand quite as unique as Victoria's Secret. Their whole idea was that they were selling a fantasy. And boy, it sure felt that way. VS made you feel like you could be this powerful, unstoppable boss woman. I'd look at the black and white photos that lined the dressing room in awe of the ethereal women in the frames. I'd pass by silk robes and imagine in my head the type of woman who buys them. I'd picture a late 20s bombshell who lives in a New York penthouse. She wakes up to get ready at her gorgeous vanity. She gracefully puts on makeup and finishes with a spritz of perfume that comes in an antique bottle with a pump. She's glamorous and successful, elegant and unstoppable. I was creating my own idea of who Victoria was, or maybe I was creating the woman I wanted to become. I feel like the VS Fashion Show has helped me come out my shell. It kind of was my graduation. That's when I became the woman I am, the woman I want to be. Josephine, we need you. Oh my God. Maybe that was what Victoria was always supposed to be, the highest versions of ourselves. And what is a better way to start becoming her than with a silk robe? Everything has energy. Our clothing has energy. A denim skirt will not make you feel as luxurious as a silk robe. This is why I love fashion so much. You literally can manifest the highest version of yourself by starting to dress like her. Have you ever noticed how much more confident you feel in a blazer? I know I feel much more put together and without even noticing, hold my head a little higher. This is what Victoria's Secret did for me. It made little me start to envision the kind of woman I'd like to be someday. And I don't know about you, but I think that's fucking beautiful. Les Wexner, the owner of Victoria's Secret, did intend to create a story with his brand. It was said in the Hulu documentary that he had read the book Making Movies by Sidney Lumet. This is where he got the idea to create this mythical founder named Victoria. This brand did feel like a movie. They even used the well-known film director Michael Bay for some of their commercials. In their internal brand video, this Victoria figure tells us all about who she is. I am Victoria Stewart White. This spring, I shall turn 36 years old. Father taught me about business, but mother was determined that I develop my soul, my passion, and my femininity. Mother was passionate, a fiery French woman with a quick temper and a healthy disrespect for the English and their stodgy ways. Victoria is this smart, savvy woman, lived in London. Her husband was a barrister. It was a fantastic story and it was a very powerful tool. We're always running around asking ourselves, would Victoria do this? That was the touchstone. A new young assistant buyer joined the team and she said, Cindy, when do we get to meet Victoria? That's how real and powerful the story was. I loved this idea that Victoria was this perfect mixture of masculine and feminine traits. 
It's the kind of woman that truly is a magical fantasy. The kind of woman that I look up to. I've always believed that the very thing that makes women so powerful is our ability to be multifaceted. We can be into makeup and science. We can be a mother and a lingerie model. Cut to Candice Wanapole walking the 2017 Victoria's Secret fashion show while pregnant. I remember thinking how cute it was that her baby boy got to walk the runway with her. And she wasn't the first to do this. Irina Shayk, Alessandra Ambrosio, Heidi Klum, Lily Eldridge, and Dutzen Crows all walked the runway with a baby on the way. Women are f***ing amazing. It reminds me of the quote by Sir William Golding. He stated, Whatever you give a woman, she will make greater. If you give her sperm, she'll give you a baby. If you give her a house, she'll give you a home. If you give her groceries, she'll give you a meal. If you give her a smile, she'll give you her heart. She multiplies and enlarges what is given to her. I think there's always been this belief that Victoria's Secret was creating the type of woman that only men find to be a fantasy. In a way, yes, that's true. They're long-legged, thin, flawless beauties. But besides that, these women were a fantasy for me too. And I think I can speak on behalf of most women when I say that. The brand is named after the Queen Victoria of England in hopes to reignite the elegance of the Victorian era in its lingerie. Secret is referring to what is hidden underneath the clothing. I felt so girly and feminine in the world of VS. Les Wexner actually stated that it was intentional to design the store in a way where men would feel uncomfortable in it. Ironic, considering the original owners of the brand, Roy and Gay Raymond, had the opposite goal. When the company was founded in 1977, Roy was inspired by his embarrassment when buying his wife lingerie at the shopping mall. He wanted to create a setting where men felt comfortable buying gifts for their partner. If men like Victoria's Secret, that's kind of a bonus, but in my imagination, they should feel uncomfortable when they're in the store. That thinking goes into the design of the store, the fitting rooms, the fabric, the display. It's all from the lady's point of view. It's nothing to do with men. I loved that he said this because I think there's always been this false narrative that if you're a woman buying lingerie from Victoria's Secret, your intent is to please a man. Lingerie is the essence of femininity. My good friend has a lingerie collection that she adores. Not once has she mentioned wearing it for a man. But even if she had, there's nothing wrong with that. We have to lean away from this idea that if a woman is trying to please a man by being sexy, then she must be oppressed. If that's what she wants to do, then what's wrong with it? We don't get up in arms when men try to please us. Thank you. It's so sweet. I only have fond memories as a consumer and I haven't been this inspired by a brand since. Let's talk about some of the things that made them magical. The models were the brand. If you're unfamiliar with the brand, Victoria's Secret Angels were essentially mini celebrities. There were women that modeled for BS and women who became angels, a step above and an honor within the brand itself. Angels are a carefully selected group of models that become a name and face for the brand. They traveled to stores to promote new products, they were featured in the TV commercials, and were the main focus at the Victoria's Secret fashion show. Once the brand made a girl an angel, everyone knew who they were, and they got more work outside of Victoria's Secret. My name is Josephine. This year, I became an angel, and it's been insane. Imagine going to bed being like a regular model, and then one day you wake up and you're an angel. I will forever, ever remember my first wings. It was like putting on my crown. If you've ever wanted to be a princess your whole life growing up. I can't even speak. I can hardly breathe. I'm getting all emotional. It was definitely my biggest dream since I was a tiny little girl. The one thing about being an angel is the amount of following you get just explodes. The work and everything just went whoosh. You're invited to red carpets. People are just like yelling your name and you're like, wait, what, me? Then the covers start coming. When you become part of the angels, it becomes family. And I never had a sister growing up. And now I have like 13 sisters. I feel so blessed and so grateful that I get to do what I do. Nobody dare wake me up from this dream. 
Many of them are major supermodels, including Tyra Banks, Heidi Klum, and Rosie Huntington Whiteley. The concept was born after their 1997 ad to promote Angel's underwear collection. Victoria's Secret introduces Angel. We're not those kind of angels. I try to be an angel. Well, if she's an angel, then I'm Don't not. say it, Karen. Angel, our sheerest, shiniest, most colorful bras and panties ever. I told you never to call me here. <laughs> this is my cloud. Says who? <laughs> Good angels go to heaven. Victoria's Secret angels go everywhere. Angels only at Victoria's Secret. The term stuck and became one of the most iconic parts of the brand. Every Victoria's Secret fashion show would start by showing each angel and their name sparkling on the screen. In between the segments, they would interview the girls about their life and what they love to do outside of modeling. But Adriana off the runway is a crazy boxer. Candace is someone that you want to love, but then she has this tiger side. She's an adrenaline junkie. Bahati takes amazing pictures. I think it helps being a model. She knows the moments to catch. This was the first time I had seen a brand tell us not only the names of the women that were modeling their clothes, but also where they are from, their backstory, and how they ended up with Victoria's Secret. It connected us to the models. This is why any argument of Victoria's Secret objectifying women just falls flat. The definition of objectification is the action of degrading someone to the status of a mere object. I don't think Victoria's Secret is the lingerie brand we should be discussing when it comes to objectification. VS only made women look powerful, strong, and angelic in their ads. If Victoria's Secret is how men view women, well, shit, we look pretty damn amazing. I'll take it. Having the audience get to know each angel is the opposite of objectification. These are grown women agreeing with Victoria's Secret to be a lingerie model in exchange for millions of dollars. I always viewed the angels as boss businesswomen. Claiming lingerie models are being objectified is like saying the NFL is objectifying men. It's a grown man agreeing to use his physical body for millions of dollars. What's the difference between the NFL and Victoria's Secret? It's only natural for little girls to look up to older women. Victoria's Secret takes on like new girls and they teach them how to be themselves, like beautiful and like look how gorgeous you are and look how what all the things that you can do and they kind of give you a voice to be an influence in the world and be a role model, which is very cool. So I think becoming an angel is like becoming an official role model for young women. Watching the same women I saw displayed in the store open up to the audience about who they are beyond their exterior made me fall that much more in love with them. They were vibrant, sweet, goofy, and hardworking. I had issues winking when I was a kid, you know? I was like, <laughs> so we'll see you in the new year. <laughs> God, I just blow a kiss. <laughs> the almond and coconut, it tastes really good. <laughs> it's so funny when she talks, she like looks at me like, did I do okay? <laughs> like a dog. You have an Ikea card? It's not like a membership card. You can still go. Oh, so it's not like my no, Costco you get, card? You get points and discounts. And my mom actually got through airport security one time with her Costco card because she forgot her ID. She's really pretty. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> We're gonna imitate Adriana's walk. She's sad, I'm just trying to sleep. I'm so oh, sorry. Did you gotta leave it? Just got in trouble. What century are you in? <laughs> Santa baby. I had all boy cousins, so I was always dragged into the boys' activities. <laughs> I'm very happy that I grew up with women like that to look up to. There was something so tasteful and elegant about the way Victoria's Secret portrayed women. Two things I find to be completely lost today. I feel like I can't watch a music video or an award show without seeing an owl twerking in my face. Today caters mostly to the male gaze. In my opinion, Victoria's Secret didn't. Les Wexner said it himself. The store was not supposed to appeal to men. And for the most part, it didn't. It was for the female gaze. I think we get too caught up in whether something is run by a man or not. Instead, we should be focusing on how the women are being portrayed. 
The underbelly of these companies are and can be a completely separate conversation, deserving of their own spotlight and or criticisms. Just because something is created by a woman does not mean it's what's best for us. Let's use the agent provocateur ad as an example. Apparently, it was written and directed by Penelope Cruz. We'll never know if she was just paid for her name to be used or not. Here's the thing. This commercial never got heat for objectifying women because it was created by a woman. This brand probably knew they could slyly get by the pitchforks of criticism if they had a woman on board. I'm finding that a majority of entertainment today is actually women objectifying women. Cardi B's song WAP and the Call Her Daddy podcast are two examples of this. Alex Cooper and Sophia Franklin actually labeled one of their episodes, You Are Just a Whole. Victoria's Secret never called me just a whole. A lot of things being labeled as modern feminism is actually just repackaged misogyny. I was at college at the, at the cusp of feminism. And I, I've, I've never said this publicly. I remember saying to a friend, because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a good guy, but I'm also a guy. And I remember saying to a friend, I can't believe it. For 10,000 years, men have wanted women to think that they want sex like we do. And it finally happened, and here I am, 20 years old. God, you are a good God. I remember going through this routine <laughs> with my doesn't... friend. No, commitment is completely unnecessary. Oh, really? You got to be kidding. So the, the women bought the feminist lie, not the feminist line, the feminist lie, you're just like men. But they get depressed when they act like men of course. sexually. I'm like, I so we might not realize it now, but we've actually canceled the brands that portrayed women beautifully in exchange for hypersexual, degrading imagery. What's worse, men getting rich by creating stunning displays of femininity, or women getting rich by degrading us to sex objects? What's the point of a woman being in power if she got there by stepping on her own gender? We can act like these things don't matter, but I heavily looked up to VS Angels growing up. I'm extremely lucky that they didn't sell me the lie to act like men. They taught me how powerful it is to be myself. You're never gonna get that corner office until you start treating Don as an equal. And no one will tell you this, but you can't be a man. Don't even try. Be a woman. Powerful business when done correctly. Little girls today aren't so lucky. We can pretend like Alex Cooper is trailblazing. We can pretend like she's moving women forward in society. It was funny because I was at dinner and there was someone that came up to me and was like my boyfriend, I was out with his friends and one of his friends was like, I hate Alex Cooper, I hate Color Daddy. And she was like, why? And he was like, because she's made so many women just so confident. Precisely. We can pretend like she's some sort of boss. I thought, oh, call her daddy. I wasn't exactly sure like how I was supposed to take the name, but tell me if I understand it correctly. That by daddy, it means that a woman can do whatever a man can do. Absolutely. Okay, good, I'm glad I got that right. Father Cooper. We can stay in our own skewed version of reality, but deep down we know the truth. She got where she is by selling a damaging lifestyle to women. The internet is fucking everyone up. It's Girls, insane. we need to just start owning what we fucking look like. Yeah. Tweak a couple things if you got a fucking pimple or something, but don't morph your entire body. Yeah. And then she doesn't give a shit about you. She doesn't give a shit about women. It should worry you that she's $60 million richer after telling her audience that they're just a whole. She's just a reminder that the patriarchy is alive and well. If she was a man, you'd be furious with that $60 million deal. What's even scarier is there are loads of girls ready to praise and defend her. This is how powerful being a woman in entertainment is. You have an extremely strong hold on the young women looking up to you. Like how the VS Angels had on me. Me writing about them 10 years later should tell you everything. Like Dutz and Crows said, It's something that will stick with you forever. I get sad thinking that Alex Cooper's ideologies might stick with girls forever. Another thing that made Victoria's Secret magical, their runway had emotion. To preface, I have a degree in fashion design and I heavily immersed myself in all things style and design since I was a young girl. Growing up, I'd watch runway shows and wondered why I didn't find them interesting at all. I actually was quite bored by the high fashion industry as a whole. 
I loved sewing. I loved dressing up. I loved design. So what was it about high fashion runway that didn't speak to me? I remember telling my mom one time, I don't like how the models look so sad. Why don't they smile? Fashion is fun. It made me uncomfortable to see real life humans acting like robots, on top of the fact that I didn't know their name. There was no emotion behind their faces. Yes, that is essentially what modeling is. You're a real life mannequin whose job is to bring attention to the clothes, not yourself. I get that. I'm just saying anything that has ever made me feel something involved emotions. Think of your favorite movie. I bet the characters didn't deliver their lines in a monotone way with a frozen face to match. I bet there were emotional scenes that made you feel something. I can't feel much about the clothing without seeing the model wearing it with some sort of feelings. Let's use Gossip Girl as an example for this. In episode four of season one, Bad News Blair, we see Eleanor Waldorf comparing photos of Blair and Serena. Her photographer states that Blair is unapproachable, controlled, and perfect. I don't think this girl is what you're trying to say. Unapproachable, controlled, perfect. Your girl is rigid like a twig. You know, she's afraid to let you in. That is exactly how I feel about watching conventional high fashion runways. The models seem to be closed off, which almost immediately closed me off to the clothes. Eleanor's photographer then goes on to rave about Serena. This girl, this girl has it. She is warm like sunshine. She has fun. She will make the clients think if they buy these clothes, then they will have fun too. Serena is the Victoria's Secret angels to me. They show emotion. They smile, laugh, dance, etc. I remember thinking, wow, these models are allowed to have fun. It's like they're given no direction and free to be whoever they feel like being. That is beautiful to me. Your girl is rigid like a twig. Unapproachable, control, perfect. She's afraid to let you in. This girl has it. She is warm like sunshine. She has fun. She will make the clients think if they buy these clothes, then they will have fun too. In the high fashion industry where people are constantly being told how to act, seeing girls just be themselves was refreshing. Betsy Johnson was one of the only designers I looked up to growing up. Looking back on her runways now, I see why. They look very similar to Victoria's Secret. The models had vibrant energy. The way I choose my girls, the way I cast the show, the models, that's, that's the beginning and the end of it. Yes! Everything you want, rock it. I want girls that are gonna have fun, enjoy themselves out there. Have a great show, everyone. Be bigger than life, stronger than strong, sexy, happy. They're showing themselves. I don't care if they're showing my clothes. I want them to feel great, whatever great means to them. The costume designer of Victoria's Secret said the best part about the show is the girls and their personalities. And then the other thrill is actually watching them work the runway in the garment. That's one thing that I love about the Victoria's Secret fashion show. You get to see the girl. It's not just about the product. They don't walk with this face, you know, down the runway so serious. They have personalities and strength and power, and you get to see every bit of it when they walk the runway. So we're just frosting, really. You know, I mean, it's fun frosting because we get to make beautiful garments for beautiful women. What's, what's to hate? It's great. Think about it from a designer's perspective. If I worked tirelessly all year on a costume, I'd want to see it on a spirited, confident, powerful woman. Let's take a look at a brand called Berta Bridal. Berta creates wedding dresses that are couture level quality with retail prices that are closer to those of mass production brands. But it's not just her dresses that set her apart from competitors. In her 2020 runway show, you know what she included? Mm-hmm, you guessed it, emotion. A woman's wedding day is one of the most emotional days of her life, and Berta didn't shy away from portraying that. I can't tell y'all how many times I've watched this video. Petition to have runway shows be mini plays. As you can see, I was made aware of this brand through TikTok. Let's take a look at the account that posted this. 
This video of the Berta Bridal Runway got 4.8 million views compared to its surrounding videos that have an average of 57,000 views. Hmm. I wonder why. Art is all about connecting with each other. It's about feeling like we're getting to know one another. And I don't know about you, but I just can't watch humans act robotic and feel connected to them or the clothes they're wearing. Alongside the happy emotions we saw out of the Victoria's Secret Angels, we also saw the realistic imperfections. We were shown their nervousness before the runway and all the costume mishaps. Lace problem. Faster, guys. I need her clear. Aaron, Steve. The hat's falling down, guys. The hat's is falling down. No, no, no. She's got to put it back on. Please help me. It doesn't matter. Just send whichever girl. The show gave us both in front and behind the curtain perspective. We watched the models walk with such power and confidence, but just before that first step on the runway, we also saw them anxiously shaking. It was such a beautiful unveiling of humanity. We as people tend to have this idea in our heads that anyone doing an extroverted job was just born fearless. These models are just effortlessly walking these runways, right? At times, these jobs can look unattainable for just anyone because we think perfection is necessary to get them. VS again displayed what queen energy looks like. It's helping women when they fall and supporting each other no matter what. Victoria's Secret broadcasting Minxie's fall showed they didn't care to come off perfect. They would rather show real human mistakes than act like their models are robots. Hi, <laughs> so beautiful and you look so beautiful yeah. at the end. It's okay. Victoria's Secret showed us that you can get the dream job and still tremble while you do it. You can almost hear people's hearts beating faster. As I near the runway, my heart starts pounding. Standing by for Candace. Before I step out onto the runway. Go out there and rock it. Just rock it. I'm so full of anticipation. I feel as if I'm going to burst. Go, Candace! New girls always bring a vitality and an energy and excitement and a nervousness to the show that is great. Believing that we can't do something until we get it absolutely perfect will hold us back in life. As Lemony Snicket said, if we wait until we're ready, we'll be waiting for the rest of our lives. One of my favorite books of all time, The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield, talks about the resistance we feel when pursuing something we love. He says it's good to feel resistance and self-doubt. It's a good sign when we procrastinate on something. It means that that very thing is what we must pursue. Because we wouldn't care so much about screwing up something we weren't truly meant for. He stated, Self-doubt can be an ally. This is because it serves as an indicator of aspiration. It reflects love love of something we dream of doing, and desire, desire to do it. If you find yourself asking yourself and your friends, am I really a writer? Am I really an artist? Chances are you are. The counterfeit innovator is wildly self-confident. The real one is scared to death. So next time you're shaking while pursuing something, it's probably because it's exactly what you're meant for. Let's also not forget the array of emotions we saw out of the models when they were told they booked the Victoria's Secret fashion show. Yeah, I'll let her know. Um, so that was a message to let you know you're confirmed for the show. What? Girl, you got the show? Yes! <laughs> you're gonna be in the BS show. Got it? Got it, babe. I need to go for mom. I got the show. Did you ever think, mom, that this is happening? Victoria's Secret 2018. I'll see you there. Another thing that made Victoria's Secret so magical was their creativity. 
As a girl who's been in love with fashion since I was little, the Victoria's Secret fashion show was my Super Bowl. Models turning into angels was like the NFL draft. I loved how each segment had a specific theme. It was unlike anything I'd seen in entertainment, let alone fashion. Anticipating what the themes were going to be, what the costumes would look like, and which models would open the segments was a thrill I'll forever miss. Come look, find your outfit, girl. <laughs> no. Oh my God, no! I don't open shows. Yes, you do. <laughs> They would spend the entire year working on the costumes and boy, it showed. Some critics would say it's odd to watch a fashion show that doesn't even sell the pieces being shown. I argue, why does everything have to be attainable? Why does everything have to be realistic? Fashion is art and we're supposed to view art, take it in, feel something, have our opinions and leave it at that. Why are we constantly trying to make things practical? That's boring. Let's use the show Euphoria as an example. Yes, the show is good, but do we think it would have gotten half the attention it did if it wasn't for its hyperbolic scenes, makeup, and clothes? Probably not. The makeup artist of the show, Donnie Davey, has said in a conversation with Sam Levinson, the creator of Euphoria, that she was struggling with the makeup looking realistic. His response to her was, fuck reality. We're experiencing reality every day. We're so used to it. Why do we want to see our everyday lives reflected in art? There's a time and place to be realistic, but the runway is not one of them. I want to see things I've never seen before. I want art to make me feel emotions I don't usually feel in everyday life. The VS designers made many costumes out of unconventional mediums. They had costumes made out of balloons, toys, metal, feathers, and Swarovski crystals. Yes, I am talking about the iconic fantasy bra. They hired artisans all over the world, painters, sculptors, and even lighting experts. The list goes on and on. The attention to detail and amount of work that went into these costumes was so beautiful. It's always been so heartwarming to me that a bunch of creatives got together and worked tirelessly to give us a show. You could argue it's just a corporation that puts this on to heavily market themselves. Yes, that's true, but there's not just one side to this. In this modern world that can sometimes ignore the beauty of painting and sculpting, I think it's incredible that Victoria's Secret gave artists the opportunity to showcase their talent in a worldwide televised fashion show. They gave them a contemporary way to showcase the beauty of their medium. So yes, this is a corporation show, but art is important. Shows like this one are important. Humans will go nuts in this world without creativity. No matter what anybody tells you, words and ideas can change the world. And medicine, law, business, engineering, these are noble pursuits and necessary to sustain life. But poetry, beauty, romance, love, these are what we stay alive for. Many little girls would watch the show and hope to one day be an angel. I hoped to one day create costumes as beautiful as these. The show ignited a flame in many. My all-time favorite segment was the passion collection from their 2011 show. I think this is by far the most beautiful segment they've ever done. The costumes, the set design, and the song was chef's kiss times a thousand. I loved this segment so much that I sewed Candace Wanapol's outfit for Halloween last year. And I'm telling you, Bob, with a body like that, a face like that, and legs like hers, she's going to be a Victoria's Secret supermodel. Speaking of sewing, if you ever want to learn how to sew, I have sewing patterns on my website. I will put the link somewhere here and in the description below. 
They are digital sewing patterns, so no waiting for shipping. You can download them right away, and all you need is a home printer to use them. So you can get started on your project, lickety split. These sewing patterns are for beginner to advanced sewers. They come with instructions on how to sew the garment, and I also have video instructions right here on this YouTube and on my TikTok to help you out. This is your sign to learn how to sew. My favorite part about knowing how to sew is I can have any clothing item I want in the world. I could see something on Bella Hadid that costs $3,000 and just remake it. But anyways, let's get back to the essay. This section was inspired by Latin roots with a couture touch. If you're unfamiliar with couture, it is custom made to order pieces by high fashion houses. Think Chanel, Valentino, Yves Saint Laurent, etc. Designers have ready to wear lines that are available to the general market in stores, and then they have their couture lines. The places where these garments are constructed are called ateliers. An interesting fact of most ateliers is they have technicians working on garments by hand and they have no sewing machines. They sew by hand to control the entire construction of the garment. The pieces are so carefully made that some can take up to a year to make. Yes, that's right, a year. So a client cannot come to a couture house and make a last minute order. This is what makes couture so special. The modern world of fashion is so fast paced, constantly pumping out mass produced clothes. It is refreshing to have a sector that still believes in the beauty of delayed gratification and personalized pieces. Couture blends so well with the Latin American style. Some trends that come from Latin roots include rich embroidery, vibrant colors, and bold ruffles. Other examples of this in pop culture include the wild music video by Jonas Blue. And for all my 90s babies, who remembers the Let's Dance performance from the Meet Miley Cyrus tour? Another thing I loved about the VS runway is it was accessible to everyone. I'd have to look up high fashion runways on YouTube as a little girl, which made me feel like I was peeking through a window I wasn't supposed to. Victoria's Secret was right on my TV screen, making me feel like I was invited inside. High fashion runways are just a bunch of rich people sitting around at a show only they can get into, admiring clothes that only they can afford. Maybe that's why Victoria's Secret didn't sell the costumes being shown. Maybe in doing that, they were sending the message that if our customers can't have it, no one can. It took the superficiality out of runway shows by forcing us to just simply admire beautiful costumes by talented artists. They left us with pure fun and enjoyment. I could go on for days about each Victoria's Secret segment, but let's move on to the last but not least magical thing about this brand. Their fantasy bra. Every year an angel was selected to model their well-known bejeweled piece labeled the fantasy bra. You no, know, it was a big surprise for me when I was told that I was gonna wear the fantasy bra. To be an angel is a big deal and then to get the fantasy bra is like crazy. When it happened for me, I just immediately started crying and like dropped into tears. The fantasy bra is the most special piece in the runaway. Yeah, when I stepped on the runway, my number one thought was don't cry because it was such a special moment to me. And as the models, everyone, we all want to wear it, you know. It's the highlight of the show. You just feel so appreciative and thankful and it really solidifies your journey as an angel. It's amazing. Enjoy the moment. You deserve it. You worked so hard for this. I would just say to go out there and get it because it's your time to shine. Victoria's Secret worked with famous jewelry designers to create the bra that would be used as a main part of the show. The bra has been made out of various stones such as diamonds, rubies, and Swarovski crystals. Fans of Victoria's Secret would wait in anticipation to find out which model would be chosen. It was as equally exciting watching an angel be told she would be wearing the bra as it was to see them get their first pair of wings. <laughs> You're wearing the fantasy bra. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Elsa, open immediately, okay? <laughs> Oh, 
this year, I'm wondering if you'd consider being our fantasy bro. <laughs> The price of the fantasy bra has ranged from 1 million to 15 million. In the 2013 show, Candace Wanapole wore the royal fantasy bra, which was valued at $10 million. It was a part of their segment labeled British Invasion. The bra was made by Moad and consisted of red and blue jewels to represent the colors of the British flag. The bra was specifically made to fit Candace's body. It was designed especially for me and exclusively for Victoria's Secret by Moad. And they actually did a mold of my body five months before they came in and did like the whole Plaster Paris thing. Anytime Swanepoel was wearing the bra, she was followed around by two bodyguards. Is that not every girl's dream? To have a bra so expensive it comes with bodyguards? Maybe I am biased because Candace wore this one. She's my favorite angel but this is my all time favorite fantasy bra. It is a classic cut with bold, vibrant colors. As a self-proclaimed girly girl, anything that sparkles, shines, and consists of diamonds makes me squeal. Having a piece worth millions made us associate Victoria's Secret with opulence. They established themselves as a brand that was accessible to the average consumer, but also had an air of luxury about them. This set them apart from any other store in the shopping mall. The fantasy bras are in fact put up for sale and marketed as the ultimate Christmas gift. After a year, if the bra does not find a buyer, it is taken apart. In the history of Victoria's Secret, two bras have found a buyer. The 2004 bra worn by Tyra Banks, labeled Heavenly 70. After the 70 karat diamonds set in the center, valued at $10 million. The second piece was from 2012, labeled the Floral Fantasy Bra, worn by Alessandra Ambrosio. The bra was valued at $2.5 million. I pictured in my head a man buying this for his wife. This brand is one of the reasons I have high standards. Next time you're crying about Chad from Sigma Chai Douchebag, just remember there's a woman out there with a bra worth millions. It's only natural for us women to get all giddy about lingerie made out of diamonds. Like I've said, lingerie is the essence of femininity and diamonds are right along with it. It's the perfect combination. Like Marilyn Monroe once said, diamonds are a girl's best friend. Oh my God, you got this for me? Yes. Stop! For our anniversary. In conclusion, there's no denying Victoria's Secret blazed a trail of glitter that cannot be replicated. In a time where fashion, film, and music lack creativity, I can't help but reminisce about the magical world that was Victoria's Secret. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, my name is Juliana Zinchenko. I'm a seamstress, video editor, writer, and podcaster. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Hit that bell button to know when I have a new video essay out. I also put out sewing videos, so if you're interested in learning how to sew, definitely check those out. I am dying to hear your thoughts on Victoria's Secret. Do you hate it? Do you love it? What were your favorite segments? Give it to me. This video of the Birdo, bleh. This video of the Birdo Bridal, oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm gonna go insane. This video of the Birdo Bridal, oh my God. Say Birdo Bridal 20 times fast, oh my gosh.